and welcome. I'm your host, Stephen Dickens, and you're joining us here for a 6.5 Media in the booth, coming to you live from QCon in Paris. I'm joined by Marcus from Intel. Hey, Marcus, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. Thank you for hosting me. So tell us a little bit about your role and what you do for Intel. Yeah, so uh, I lead Intel Cloud Services, uh, which is a collection of uh, things that include um, Intel Developer Cloud, uh, as well as uh, Granlade, our performance optimization service, uh, as well as uh, uh, Converge as well, which is our MLOps platform. Um, and uh, I joined Intel just two years ago. I okay. uh, came over from NVIDIA, and NVIDIA had built out NVIDIA's cloud infrastructure. And uh, in Intel, I'm, I'm yeah, focused on building out cloud services. So the obvious question I think a lot of the listeners and the viewers are going to be asking, or wanting me to ask at least, is I think Intel, I think hardware. This is a cloud native Kubernetes event. Most of the companies here, if not all of them, are software companies. Tell me a little bit about Intel from a software perspective. Well, it turns out Intel is one of the biggest software companies in the world. Uh, in order to enable all the hardware, it takes a lot of software. And we've been uh, yeah, very aggressively building up our software capabilities over the years. And increasingly, what we're also doing is, in addition to just building out the software, uh, part of it is, you know, obviously the, the lower levels of the firmware uh, that we're contributing to the various, op, you know, to, to Linux. We're contributing to the various uh, open source frameworks. Um, and, but increasingly, what we've done is actually also built up um, higher level services that we can make available uh, to our customers, you know, to maximize the value. So, as an example, for instance, what we've done with Granlade. Granlade, you know, we, we build out all the software hardware capabilities. With Granlade, we can also optimize the performance. Of, um, of a workload, and so at the end of the day, what matters for the customer is what is my overall, how much can I get out of a given piece of hardware, and it's that combination of what can I optimize in the hardware, but then what can I optimize at the higher levels of the stack that maximizes the, the value for the customer. One of the key themes this week is platform engineering, and I think it's interesting you talk about Granulate there. I think I'm starting to see this whole space mature, we're starting to see cost optimization, we're starting to see performance. Are you seeing that same trend? Is that what Intel's seen with Granulate and was that behind kind of the thought process there? Yeah, so I think what's happened is, I mean, you know, a lot of people have moved all their workloads into the cloud and it's really convenient to, to spin up services, uh, but then at the end of the month you get the cloud bill and, and it's a big shock for everybody. And uh, this is where Granulate can come in and can help. Um, and, it's this thing, it's, it's, with Granlite, the nice thing, it's additive to a lot of other optimization tools. A lot of times you talk to customers, like, oh, we already optimized a lot of things. It's like, well, what do you really optimize? Well, we're using various tools you know, to optimize the instance types, for instance, that they're using in the cloud. But what Granlite helps you do is really increase the efficiency and shrink down the footprint of, of the workload, which means in a lot of cases, you actually end up getting more performance, even though you're actually using less resources. So you're saving costs, and at the same time you're getting better performance, which is not intuitive, right? You always think you add more money, it's that means you get more. It's a trade-off between exactly. the two. Exactly, but in this case, like, no, you, you, you increase the efficiency, you've shrunk down your workload, which means now it can actually run faster. You're getting more throughput, you're getting better response times, and at the same time you end up with a smaller cloud bill. And as we start to see people going from more and more mission-critical workloads, looking to get more transactions, starting to support different types of environments, that's becoming more crucial. Absolutely, very much so. So, I've got to ask, we're recording this in 2024, and we've gone a few minutes in, and we haven't talked about AI. That's right. It's probably the first time that we've gone more than five minutes into any one of these episodes without talking about AI. We're backing the trend here. I know, we'll, we'll, we'll get on trend. We, we kind of, we're getting there eventually. But no, I mean, all joking aside, what's the, AI, we obviously see a lot of from Intel, in the, uh, in the hardware side, what you do with Gaudi and various other pieces. What's going on from the software side, from your portfolio with regards to AI? So the big investment that we've made in addition to building out the Gaudi hardware, the, the, the GPU Max series, um, has been in the developer cloud. So in order to, to uh, make accelerate the adoption of, of the, this new hardware, um, we've actually decided that we're making major investments and building out our own cloud environment where we can have developers come in. They can start with just a VM or maybe just one Gaudi card. They can go to a whole Gaudi system. Or if they want to do some foundation model training, foundation model training, they can actually, they can take an entire cluster with thousands of Gaudis 
and they can get their work done there. And so by doing that, that has really helped us to directly interact with the end customers um, and, and also allows us to get the feedback from them to say, well, we have all this raw compute power. Well, we're seeing, you know, we should be seeing two, you know, higher performance than what they will be getting on an A100 or an H100. Um, and if they're not getting it, that gives us the opportunity then to work with them and make sure that, that also for all of the workloads that we get the feedback, we can optimize things. So Marcus, we're at KubeCon. Obviously the Kubernetes team for Europe are gathering here. All the communities here. Tell me a little bit about Intel and Kubernetes. What are you doing in the space? What are you contributing to the community? And really what, why people should think Intel when they think Kubernetes. Yep. Yeah, first off, so as a company, we're contributing, we have uh, dozens of engineers, and we're one of the main contributors, actually, to, to Kubernetes. Um, and a lot of these optimizations, up to this point, um, we've been upstreaming them, and then typically it takes a while for them to come back downstream. One of the things we've started to do is that with Granulate, with the acquisition of Granulate, that has really opened this up. We have an outlet where a lot of these optimizations that we're doing, we can actually make those available through Granulate. And that means that uh, with Granulite, if you're running Kubernetes workload, a lot of times you know, workloads keep on growing, your cloud bill is growing. Um, with Granulite, we're able to then actually optimize these workloads and minimize the footprint that, that uh, minimize your cloud bill, essentially. And that's crucial as these workloads move into production, we start to see them scale in their size. We don't want to see the corresponding increase in the cloud bill. Absolutely, absolutely. And as more and more of these workloads are moving over to Kubernetes, um, I think that was the, the problem even gets magnified. And that's where we can really contribute with, with, with uh, Granulate. And it's not just Kubernetes. The nice thing about Granulate is also works really well for any kind of uh, big data workloads, any kind of data lake kind of uh, workloads. In fact, we just had a session yesterday with, uh, with Vijay Prem Kumar from American Airlines, and they were talking the optimization they've done in the data lake environment, as well as with Kubernetes, as well as any other uh, Java-based or, uh, or Go workloads that uh, we can optimize with, with uh, Granulate. It's really powerful, and it's not, it's something that we can, it's, it's fairly quick. Um, typically, you, you download the installer, uh, the, the, the uh, profiler, um, you, you run it for a week, and then based on that, you will see, in most cases, you will see instant results, actually. Fantastic. So, you mentioned there the contributions. That's how this community sort of checks your bona fides, if you will. Can you maybe double click there around how big a contributor Intel is to a lot of the communities and projects that are here? Yeah, so as I said, we have thousands of uh, developers and we're contributing to Kubernetes, we're contributing to the Linux kernel, we're contributing to various AI frameworks, uh, we're contributing to Istio, it's, it's, it's really amazing. I mean, for me, coming into Intel, I, I knew that Intel was contributing, but I didn't realize the magnitude. The scale of the, the scale which contributing, yeah. And specifically, to your other question about um, when it comes to Kubernetes specifically, um, Granulate is actually an amazing tool when you want to optimize your Kubernetes workloads. Granulate can help you. We just had a discussion yesterday with uh, Vijay Prem Kumar from American Airlines. They have been able to shrink down the Kubernetes workloads by almost a factor of two by leveraging Granulate. So That's Granulate huge. Is, is, That's huge. is really, really powerful. And essentially what it does so is... So how would they, so, I mean that, we, as I say, I, we're watching the track of Kubernetes mature, platform engineering's kicking in. I think it's that type of actual specific example of, we've gone out of the tinkering phase, we're now into production, we need to optimize. Maybe paint for me, if you would, the Granulate story of, exactly how they did that, how did they get that optimization? So what happens is that you install the Granulate agent uh, into, into each of the, into your Kubernetes environment, your Kubernetes pods. Uh, we will then profile what your workload is doing and we detect inefficiencies. Where oftentimes, you know, as, as often as it happens as a, as a DevOps person or, uh, you know, people are more worried about getting the workload running, but not necessarily how to really optimize it. And with Granlite, Granlite will do that for you. It does it autonomously, meaning you don't have to sit there and constantly optimize things. It's just, it's a service that you're consuming and it will make sure that your parts are optimized. You're not wasting a bunch of CPU cycles. Um, and, and based on the profiling data, we will then um, size those, those um, properly size those, those parts and, and containers. And, uh, and in those cases, like in the case of American Airlines, they were able to shrink down the workload by, by, uh, by almost factor, factor of two. That's huge. So huge savings. 
So, Marcus, as we start to think about wrapping here, what would be those three key takeaways as people start to think Intel and software and maybe frame that in the perspective of Intel software and Kubernetes? Um, I would say the first one is definitely is, is, you know, efficiency, the performance story. What can I do there? And again, if I'm, you know, Kubernetes is becoming the de facto standard across most workloads, right? I mean, there's always a legacy workload that still needs to run on my mainframe, but any of the modern workloads would be running on Kubernetes. Uh, a lot of AI workloads run on Kubernetes. Um, and this is where really where, where we can help with, uh, with performance optimization with Granulate. Um, and then in terms of um, any new AI work that people want to do, um, Intel Developer Cloud would be an ideal starting point for that. Um, the third one that is also uh, at the top of people's minds would be the Intel Trust Authority. Um, okay. you know, and I think it's something where, where also, you know, whether AI or not AI workload, there's all these uh, supply chain attacks that we've been seeing over the last few years. My prediction is that with AI, I think we, the, the kind of threats and the kind of attacks you're going to be seeing is going to get even worse. And I think, you know, with Intel Trust Authority, we can avoid a lot of these problems by doing the attestation. We are using the uh, trusted, um, um, trusted domain extensions that are in, in, our, in our Xeon chips, for instance. And we allow, we provide an attestation service with Intel Trust Authority where we can actually guarantee that, that the hardware, the physical hardware that you're running has not been tampered with and the software you're deploying is what you expect to be deployed. And you can avoid anybody like, you know, like tampering with, the, with, your, uh, with your CI, CD pipeline and injecting malicious code. Those are the kind of threat vectors that we are that we Intel's addressing. been innovating for a long time with SGX trying to focus in on confidential computing. Is that trust authority part of that overall story? Correct, correct. So, so the SGX and TDX, that's the underlying, the underlying capabilities that are built into the hardware. So we have this uh, trusted Taking execution engine. Taking that up the stack, basically. Taking up the stack and then providing a cloud service. Intel Trust Authority is a cloud service that will make sure, it will essentially close the loop, essentially, and make sure that those underlying capabilities that we have it's a service that will validate that it's actually that it's actually operating as, 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 as expected. So Marcus, this has been a fascinating conversation. Lots to unpack around Intel and their software portfolio. Thank you very much for joining me on the show. Thank you for hosting me, Jeff. You've been watching another episode of 6.5 Media coming to you live from KubeCon on the Intel booth. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.